Welcome to today's episode of People with Passion for Pets. My guest on the show today is Leanna Taylor, the CEO of the Arizona Pet Project. The Arizona Pet Project is a nonprofit organization that has made it its mission to help pet parents in need. Since 2017, they have helped pet parents to be able to keep their pets through financial and other hardships. Leanna, welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on the show. I'm really excited to uh, talk about the Arizona Pet Project today. It's my favorite subject. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, Leanna, you are the CEO, and the Arizona Pet Project helps pet owners to be able to keep their pets through financial or other hardships, which I think is just kind of an amazing thing. I've never heard of an organization like that before. Um, so talk a little bit more about it. You're absolutely right. Our goal is really making sure that families in times of financial uh, or situational hardship aren't forced to choose between caring for themselves and caring for their animals. We know, right, that uh, people, when they're forced to make those choices, often choose their pets to their own detriment, which means that people are remaining in uh, situations of domestic violence. They are remaining unhoused when they've lost um, housing. They're choosing to feed their animals instead of themselves. And so our goal is really making sure that both the pet and the families get the care that they need. That's wonderful. How did this uh, come to be, this Arizona Pet Project? Our organization was formed about 20 years ago as Friends of Animal Care and Control to support the local shelter here in Maricopa County. Um, and at the time the organization was formed, we had uh, over 100,000 animals coming into our shelters in this community alone. And over 60,000 were euthanized each year, which is just a shocking number. And so we moved to a spay and neuter model in order to impact uh, the number of unwanted kittens and puppies coming into the shelter. And we did that for uh, about 15 years. 2016, you know, I started asking for more data. I really wanted to understand why we still had 60,000 animals coming into our shelters and they weren't puppies and kittens. What we found in looking at that data was that they were primarily older animals um, that clearly had come from a home uh, and at one point had a family who loved them. So we started digging a little bit deeper and realized that many of those animals were owner surrenders, surrendered to the shelter for, for issues that were completely solvable. Um, and so that was really the impetus behind this next phase of our organization, which was really looking at why this human-animal bond was severed and what we could do to prevent that. So what are some of the, um, the services that you offer to uh, pet owners in need? We are willing to get really creative. We've actually flown uh, animals to be reunited with their families when they've lost their home or uh, situations of domestic violence to be reunified because the family couldn't take the pet with them either on the bus or train or plane or in their car. Um, but primarily what we provide are things like uh, urgent and emergent veterinary care, we provide temporary boarding for families when they need just a little bit of rest in order to get themselves stabilized or access medical or mental health treatment. Um, we provide pet deposits, spay and neuter licenses and vaccines. Those are often um, very inexpensive, but needed services to access safe shelter, transitional housing or permanent housing. Um, we help families with pet food and supplies, and most importantly, we provide case management. All of our uh, staff that work with our clients are social workers, because while we are certainly dealing with a pet-related issue, we're talking about human beings and human crisis. Uh, and we also want to make sure those individuals, that we connect them with other services they may need. Do they need assistance and utility assistance? Um, if their pets are hungry, they probably are too. And so we really want to make sure that those wraparound services are included. There's somebody out there that uh, could use your help. How would they get in touch with you? 
one of the things that we've found over our seven years of doing this is it's great to be inside of an animal shelter, but that's not the only place that families are um, what we call a point of entry, right, uh, of needing to enter into a program. So folks can find us. We are on site at three different animal shelters across the valley. They can find us at the Human Services Campus. They can find us at our Pet Support Center, which is a bilingual center in South Phoenix, um, where we have staff Monday through Friday. And then they can find us online through social media and by phone. And our services are statewide. Um, we just placed our first staff person outside of Maricopa County in Tucson, uh, and then we do receive referrals agencies as well. So we try to be everywhere for everyone. That's wonderful. So, of course, we'll be sure to um, check, uh, have your links in the description below our video here as people are hearing about um, all these wonderful things that you are able to provide. People will want to get involved. So um, tell us a little bit about what people can do if they want to be part of this uh, great cause. Well, we love support in all of its forms. So um, really, depending on where people live, we do have volunteer opportunity, particularly for anyone who does speak Spanish. Um, we have outreach teams that go out into South Phoenix to, to bring awareness of the availability of resources. And we have outreach teams that go out and work with our unhoused communities across Maricopa County. Um, people can volunteer at our pet support center in distributing food. If you're a veterinarian or a vet tech, we always need donated services. Um, and then of course, funding is critical to keep these programs going. So, you know, people can jump online, make a, a donation. People can become monthly donors for as little as $5 a month. And that all adds up and has such a tremendous impact. Yeah, it is uh, really a great organization. And uh, I'm uh, very glad that I came across you. Can you give some examples or some of your favorite stories of uh, how you've okay. been impactful? Yeah, I mean, where do I start? Uh, <laughs> my favorite thing in the world, really, with this job um, is our clients. They are just some of the most resilient, compassionate, caring people who are facing unimaginable hardship. And in many cases are doing it with such grace and strength. Um, so we're really inspired by our clients. And, um, but I've got two stories that I think really showcase the importance of considering animals in our care plans. You know, this program is so important because there are thousands of agencies across Arizona who work with humans, but in many cases, their pets are presenting a barrier to care and their programs are unable to, to assist with the pet related cost. So that's why our program is really important. So um, I'll give you two examples. One is a, a gentleman, he's a veteran who suffers from extreme PTSD and um, so much so that he has chosen to be to live on, on our streets unhoused for over 20 years. And the VA here in Maricopa County has been trying to get him to accept housing assistance for two decades and he just refused. Over the summer, he actually found a dog a stray dog that he adopted as his own, as his companion. Um, and it was out of concern for his dog, not himself, that he finally sought out housing. Hmm. And the VA was able to identify, they were thrilled that this man finally took them up on their offer. They found him transitional housing the very next day, but he couldn't bring his pet with him because the dog needed to be vaccinated and their programs don't cover those costs. He said, no, thank you. We'll stay where we are. Well, we were able to get that gentleman and his dog into one of our vet clinics the next day, vaccinated, licensed, and they moved into their own home together for the first mm. time in 20 years uh, within that same week. So really powerful. The other um, gentleman that comes to mind was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, a fairly aggressive form that needed with, with great outcomes, though, if it's treated. And he refused services because he had nobody at home to mm -hmm. watch his dog while he underwent chemotherapy that would require him to be in the hospital for a week at a time. So he said no and literally put his life on the line in order to stay with his pet. 
And you shouldn't have to do that. So by providing temporary boarding once a week for uh, three months, we were able to keep this family together. He could pursue his cancer treatment. And at the end of it, he got a clean bill of health and he and his best friend, his only family, his connection to this world, were able to stay together. Wow, what great stories. Yeah, so that's very heartwarming. And uh, yeah, uh, just really shows again how impactful it is. And and yeah, we don't realize, um, you know, unless we get into these situations, how difficult it can be um, to, you know, when you live alone and you are a pet owner to maybe take medical, um, you know, services mm -hmm. because you don't have anybody to take care of your pet. So yeah, that alone is just a, a great help. Definitely. Yeah, we find so in many cases that the people who need these services the most, um, or need their pets the most, I should say, tend to be the ones that struggle with these barriers um, as well. You know, and we know that isolation and loneliness is a is an epidemic in this country, and that many of our seniors can go weeks without having a human interaction. So their ability to to have a pet and and have that companionship and that friendship is really important. And I think it's uh, incumbent upon all of us to to support to support that um, their ability to do that. It's so special. I mean, we're just what a lucky what a lucky job I have to be mm -hmm. able to, to hear these stories. And you know, those are two examples of thousands of families we work with each year, and each one is just as heartwarming as the next. It's really fun for anybody that wants to be involved that uh, wants to help. Uh, with your cause in any way that they can. Uh, we'll be sure to share your uh, links in the description below our video. Make sure that uh, they can connect with you in any way that they'd like. Great. Yeah, we appreciate mm -hmm. that very much. Takes the village. So before I can let you go, I always have to ask uh, about your personal pets. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so let's see. I've got two dogs, mm -hmm. uh, Pippin and Bandit. And actually, both of them came from, this was before our program existed, both of them came from individuals who were undergoing extreme hardship. And so, you know, I look at them and I, as much as I love them and wouldn't trade them for the world, mm -hmm. I can't help but think about the families that uh, that had them first. Um, and then I have a, a very noisy but beautiful budgie, little parakeet. Mm -hmm. um, and then my son brought home a bearded dragon who is a complete joy. I always say when I retire, I'm going to open a bearded dragon sanctuary because they oh, are wow. the, the most delightful and easy to care for pets. Very low oh. maintenance. <laughs> yeah, what an interesting pet. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I would never have thought in a million years that that would be, uh, that, that we would have a lizard in the house and that we would love him so much. Yeah, Stitch, she's uh, she's quite great. That's awesome. <laughs> Is there anything else that uh, we didn't go over that uh, you might want to share with the audience? You know, we're we're really trying to build a community of individuals who are combating the narrative around if people can't afford pets, they shouldn't have them. Because mm -hmm. the reality is they should, right? Everybody deserves mm -hmm. that companionship. And so how do we break down that really outdated narrative that can be extremely harmful? Um, we're all one situation and one paycheck away mm -hmm. from disaster and ruin. It could be any one of us. So considering that the next time you hear people criticizing those who dump their animals, you know, just really coming from a place of compassion and then advocating for your favorite social service agencies to incorporate pets into their care plan. Mm -hmm. We're one agency. We can't do this alone. We really need to get people thinking about pets as part of the family. So I would leave your your listeners with that little call to action and just thank everybody for their support. Wow. Yeah, that was uh, very powerful. You were absolutely right. It's not just um, understanding that, yes, pets are so important for people in need. And, and we all as pet owners uh, obviously know how much joy they bring into our lives. So especially when you are coming into hardship, um, yeah, I can only imagine how powerful it would be to have a pet. Uh, and you're absolutely right. It, it, it's not that you can't afford it. It's that you really need to have one in your life uh, that, you know, because it, they do 
bring uh, emotional support and they bring a lot of joy into our life. And we we certainly all need that. Um, but you you also, I, I love what you just said, and that is we really need to advocate for um, getting pets welcomed in more ways. Because like yeah. you were saying, that the hardest thing is that when people do seek help, a lot of times they cannot accept the help because it would exclude their pets. You are exactly right. You yeah. are exactly right. And we see that time and time again. And it's an unnecessary barrier. There are models of how to incorporate pets um, across the country. And we are fortunately seeing some great movement in this area, but there is a lot of work to be done. I uh, I thank you for your work in the area and uh, really love your organization. Thank you for all that you and your team do. Appreciate it. Thanks for promoting our work. We really are very grateful. If you enjoyed today's episode of People with Passion for Pets, then I'm sure you'd also love the rest of our interviews. So I'll go ahead and share that playlist for you. Please like and share this video. And until next time, keep your paws on the road. Mm -hmm.